Welcome to One Plus One. I am Courtney Act. Today on the show, my guest is singer and songwriter Lisa Oroglasso, one half of the iconic pop duo The Veronicas. And Lisa has had huge success in Australia and all around the world, but always with her identical twin sister, Jess, by her side. We caught up at her home and we talked about fame, sharing the spotlight and family. So welcome to One Plus One. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being Thank here. You. It's lovely to see you. It's so beautiful to see you. You're actually my first guest here at our mountain cabin. Well, I feel very, very lucky. And also, isn't this your first ever interview without Jess? It is. And it feels great already. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it feels good. A little weird to not yeah. have Jessie here. I'm not sure if I'm capable of finishing a sentence. I guess we'll find out today. Mm. Well, I'm glad to be talking to you and I'm excited to um, to do this like first interview without Jess. I have to, to admit that we obviously know each other. Very well. We grew up together. A lifetime. <laughs> a lifetime. Beautiful memories. I think yeah. we met, you must have been like four or five. Yeah, I think we were four or five. And I was like six or so. Yeah. Um, at at dance school yeah singing dancing and acting our way through life was that always something that you loved doing absolutely yeah. yeah from the minute we could walk and talk we were you know singing and dancing around the house and uh dad was in a band mm. so music was always filling our household mum was always playing you know great australian rock and roll and vinyl so it was always in our blood mm. what a beautiful way to grow up getting to you know, be on stage at such a young age, um, having a beautiful community of theatre kids to mm. grow up with. It was so free. Yeah. You're down, you're down, you're down. I'll give that there, I'll move the chairs. I think people, sometimes people see twins as like the same person in yes. a way. And what is it like being a twin? There must be like an element of codependence and then also an element of trying to have your own independence. Yeah. Um, we always say being a twin is a very interesting karma mm -hmm. um, because your whole life, you know, especially we're, we're identical twins. Mm. So we also look the same. Uh, we often dressed the same growing up as well because we realised we got a lot of attention that way. Yeah. Um, and there is literally one minute between us. So we're as close as you can possibly get. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people, I mean, society, friends, family, they, they coin you as the twins. Mm. Um, I don't think we were overly bothered by it at a young age. I think we enjoyed it. And then, you know, when we started the band together, the Veronica's, I think that's when we realised you know, often in media, people would start to compare you mm. and, and the public would compare you to each other. And, oh, well, which one's the better singer? Right. <laughs> or which one's older or, you know, which one's whatever. Yeah. And that was always really weird because yeah. I think that's when we became hyper aware of the fact that, oh, wait a minute, like we are individuals and we do want to be seen as individuals, mm. you know, we, we're, we were teenagers. Mm. So we were also figuring out our place in the world. Um, I remember Jessie would do crazy things like she'd come home with big tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> she was 18. Wow. And I was really, I didn't know how to, uh, 
I didn't know how to handle it there for a while. Yeah. I remember crying. I was like, why do you want to be different from me? Oh, wow. And she was like, you know, I don't. I just want to be me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it takes a lot of strength to step away and, and, and sometimes put yourself first and realize that you actually are enough without all that because there's so much comfort and identity within the twinship and dynamic. And then when you step away, I'm kind of like, well, I'm just plain ordinary me. And really it's just the last few years that I've truly discovered who that person is. Hmm. And what have you discovered in that? I'm very family orientated. Um, Lisa is almost, uh, antithetical to what people perceive the Veronica's to be. So the Veronica's are very dynamic, very opinionated, the, you know, powerhouses on stage. Red lips, smoky Red eyes, lips, smoky latex. Eyes. Exactly. It's amazing when you can create a character or an alter ego. Hi. Hi, Courtney. <laughs> like the Veronica's, like Courtney Act. Yeah. It's, it's like you put on armour and you're indestructible. So... The Veronica's are ultimately the really superhero versions of ourselves. Yeah. You know, that, that inner strength, that fire of, uh, you know, being outspoken young women. Yeah. And it absolutely has been a huge asset to me figuring out who I am as a person as well, individually. So um, I feel, yeah, I, I'm still learning every day. Even doing this interview is completely out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Actually, why I said yes, because I don't have Jesse to fall back on. Jesse is so dynamic. J Jesse's, um, you know, I, I'm her biggest fan. She's got so many incredible stories to tell. She's had a very colorful, incredible life, you know, very outspoken. I mean, Jess, I guess, compared to you in a way, like she's dated Billy Corgan, she's dated Ruby <laughs> yeah. Rose, she's had these sort of like public, high profile relationships. Yes. Um, and you've, you know, had your boyfriends as well, but it's yeah. it's been in a different sort of way. Jess has been more public with I'm that. I'm very right? private yeah. with my relationships. Um, yeah, Jesse's had a lot of really dynamic, interesting relationships. Won't go into that, but <laughs> uh, yeah, and and I and I I suppose I've chosen to keep that part of my life quite personal and and sacred to me, and and I like that. Yeah. But I'm also in a relationship, right? You know, I'm married yeah. and I, you know, it really took someone special and I, I suppose unique like Logan to come into a dynamic like Jess and I and to be so graceful and understanding because this is such a thing, you know, the Veronica's, Jess and I, when we're together. And Logan, lucky. Logan, your husband is a triplet. He is a triplet. I guess he would, because he would understand that relationship probably better than anybody what it's like being a multiple yeah. sibling. Yeah, he has that intrinsic knowing. Yeah. He he understands that you would die for this person. They're the biggest part of who you are. And in my wedding speech, actually, I said to love him is to love them mm. and to love me is to love her. So it it truly is a very special, funny little dynamic that we have going on. Is doing stuff like this now at this time of your life important? in a way to come to understand who you are independent of Jess? I think so. I think it terrifies me. Yeah. So I should absolutely do it. Like I genuinely questioned <laughs> whether I would be able to finish a thought because mm -hmm. Jess and I, uh, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful relationship, but we'll literally finish each other's sentences. So when I'm out here on my own talking about myself as well, which is kind of weird, um, it's like being without a safety net. Exactly. Well, it's funny because get me in a room or in a studio to write a song and I'm happy to do that alone, yeah. actually. That's, act that's for me is definitely something I love to express mm. individually with, without Jesse there sometimes. And that is 100% how I communicate best is through music. And, and I really can deep dive into how I'm feeling and what I'm feeling. Yeah, so when I sing it, it's a lot easier for me. Songwriting is such a big part of the Veronica's, which I think 16 years ago, 
people who are pop artists writing their own music wasn't as common. Mm -hmm. And I remember a defining feature of the Veronica's originally was that you wrote your own music and that yeah. you also wrote music for other people. And mm -hmm. that gave the Veronica's a real credibility in the industry. Yeah. And so that songwriting technique and that songwriting um, device is something for you that's important in just communication. Absolutely. Uh, it's been my form of personal therapy for as long as I can remember. It saved my life more times than I can count. And also just as artists, it's, it's our integrity is, is rooted in being songwriters and telling our stories. Mm. Um, yeah, we, when we first started as the Veronica's pop was still a bit of a dirty word. Mm. And so we really had to solidify ourselves and prove ourselves at the beginning that we could sing without auto-tune. I remember countless studios we would enter and, and producers would be like, it's just so refreshing that you can sing in tune. <laughs> I remember thinking, what? Yeah. You know, and, and absolutely, you know, being songwriters is, is so integral to the artists that we are. And um, we actually signed a publishing deal first at 18 before we ever signed any recording deal as artists. Is that what took you to the US initially? It was, yeah. We were out there to, to write songs. So we were there, um, 18, 19 years old, leaving Brisbane pretty much for the first time. What was it like leaving Brisbane at age 18 and going all the way to LA? Did you have family with you? Mum travelled with us at the very beginning. She came on that big, it was about a year of songwriting that we did. And she came with us. I remember the very first stop was a hotel room in Germany. We had a co-write there. And they had cigarette um, stains in the bed sheets and the hot water wouldn't work and it was in the middle of winter. Oh. So she would boil the water for us and make us hot baths. I was <laughs> we had the best mum oh. in the world. Um, and it was incredible. We basically got a, 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 a PhD in songwriting with the best writers in the entire world. We were co-writing with Billy Steinberg, mm. Toby Gad, Max Martin. And we were in Germany, Sweden, Canada, America, and we were having the time of our lives. And it was beautiful because there was no real pressure at that point. It was just exploring and figuring it out um, and figuring out who we were, our voices, the Veronica's and as songwriters. And it was when we landed in America at the end of the trip that we started to, you know, look for management and we started doing showcases for labels in America. It was just Jess and our acoustic guitar. I think we knew about three chords at that point. And we were going into these major labels in front of people like Seymour Stein, who, you know, discovered Madonna and the Ramones. Mm. And we were just like, how's it going? This is our song. And we got signed to one of the biggest record deals at the time with Warner Brothers Records. Wow. Two million dollar deal with Sire Records out of the US two little girls from Brisbane, Australia. And uh, yeah, signed by the grandfather of rock and roll, Seymour Stein. Crazy. How did you, were you aware of how that exciting that was at the time? We were just so pumped, babe. I don't think we quite realized. Um, it just felt so exciting. Yeah, so exciting. And we were always on 10. We just couldn't believe we were there doing it. So we were very naive. And just along for the ride. Two young women in the pop industry. Did you experience sexism and what was that like? We did, of course. I mean, you know, 16 years ago even, that was absolutely such a huge part of being in the music industry, uh, especially there in America. We're in the American music industry. It's a whole other beast out there. We we very young, we were 19. We were over there by ourselves when we signed that deal. We moved to America. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. We had freedom. We had no one looking over our shoulders. But we were also faced with uh, a lot of really intense realities of being young women over there in the industry. Whatever situation you can imagine young women would, would find themselves in over there, we've been in that situation. Wow. And I remember there was 
one time very early on in moving over there um, where we were taken to a concert, sort of wined and dined and um, on the ride home, we were underage, they weren't allowed to drink alcohol, but we were plied with alcohol and we were being taken down in a limo, you know, a lot of back roads and, uh, you know, I, I won't go too into it, but it was a very scary situation. And Jess, I remember, was so vocal and loud and demanding about being taken home. And I was feeling really out of it at the time, so I wasn't really able to stand up for myself. And I just, I think, like, God, she's such a strong woman and how lucky I was that she was there to to speak up and do that. Yeah, yeah. or it could have been a lot worse. That's amazing to think about that that identity of just the togetherness and the, I guess, the different facets that both of you have that make you sort of greater than the sum of your parts in yeah. a way. Yeah, we've always had each other's back. So I guess for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah, I guess like some of those qualities in Jess, which could manifest in like twin fights. Yeah. In that situation, Absolutely. you're like, oh, I am so grateful. Oh, so thankful. Yeah. Yeah, Jessie, she's um, I call her. She's an activist heart. She has always been that way for as long as I can remember. From a very very young girl, she would see um, inequality and she would speak up and she would say, "I want to change that," you know. And we've seen it. She has been such a, a beautiful, loud voice for change and, and inequality and. Um, for the LGBT community as you have and as an ally, an ally as well. And, and that's something we've always been very passionate about. And we were brought up that way because mommy has always instilled that in us. It's about using your voice and your platform for, for more than just yourself. Mm. I remember your mum being such a big influence on, on us and, yeah. and me and pop culture and sitting us down and playing us an edited version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show <laughs> where she, she, like, on the two VHSs, cut out the sex scenes and was like, kids, yeah. you need to watch this. This is important cultural history. She did. I, I, we laugh about that. Mm. I was like, how cool is Mum that she had us all sit down to watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show? We were so lucky to have a mum like that that, you know, celebrated diversity and strength and, oh, all those wonderful parts of who we are and of life. Like, it was... We were so lucky growing up with her. And she, in recent years, has um, had struggles with her health. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, Mummy was diagnosed with a rare neurological condition called progressive supernuclear palsy. And... What does that mean? It's a motor and cognitive degenerative disease um, that, over time... Um, yeah, her, her mental um, and physical decline becomes quite rapid at about the six-year mark. Wow. And it's been the hardest thing we've ever had to go through. Mm. Um, you, know how, you know how strong and independent mummy is and... She's such a vibrant powerhouse of a woman. And it was very scary when she got the diagnosis. Has this period of, you know, what was 2020 and, and stopping and pausing and coming back, has that been a blessing in a way to have that time to spend with your mum? It has been a blessing for us yeah. to get as much time with her as possible. Um, when she got the diagnosis, we did come home and oh. Logan and I, my husband and I, actually moved in with her for a while and took care of her. And there was a lot of misdiagnosis in the early sort of stages and years because uh, they had her on all sorts of medications that had her knocked out. So we couldn't quite get to the root of what the diagnosis was. Um, and that was very, very difficult because she was uh, on antipsychotics being knocked out and we had to fight really hard to get her off all those medications that she'd been given to go see a neurologist and get really 
the proper cause. So when we got that, we realized that this is, yeah, this is more than just depression and anxiety. Mm. And, you know, she always knew. She'd never had a history of that before and she said, I just, there's something else going on. It's heartbreaking, but it's also, it gives you a lot of perspective. Going through these last few years with, with Mama has also really made me think about what I want for my life, you know, because it's so easy to get swept up and caught up in the whirlwind of my career mm. and the excitement and the busyness and it made me really reflect and think about oh, what, what are the other things? What, what else does life hold for me? And what are those things? Marriage was a big step for me, Yeah, <laughs> to be honest. I always said I was going to marry you, but then <laughs> you're far right. too glamorous. I wasn't, yeah. it's, it was, that was going to be an issue, I'm mm. afraid. I had to be all about me had on the day. Had to be the more glamorous one. Yeah. You so, were so glamorous on the day. Honestly, all I cared about was that, my husband showed up. Yeah. He was going to go through with it because I'm a lot. I was like, run for your life, babe. But he didn't. He, he stuck it out. And, of course, mummy was there. And she actually walked with Jesse down the aisle um, before me, which just, oh, it was, yeah, just the best. So, um, so yeah. marriage. Marriage. Not to be heteronormative, but sometimes... <laughs> After marriage can come babies. Ah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Where's, yes. where's that at? Where are your well, thoughts on that? Well, we did have a go at it last year. Huh? <laughs> it was our first attempt at falling pregnant, and I actually did fall pregnant. Um, but unfortunately, it ended up being an ectopic pregnancy, mm. which can be actually quite life-threatening. Yeah. And I was just very fortunate that uh, they caught it before it got to that point. And what's the pro? Is there surgery that is involved? Um, yeah, I was lucky that I didn't get that to that point. So I had to have a injection. It was honestly it's one of the scariest things I've ever had to do. I had to do it alone. Um, it was during COVID, so they wouldn't let Logan into the room. Um, so I had to really like, you know, be alone with it and my body, and just trust that it was all going to work out the way it needed to. Gosh. And, um, you know, I, I openly shared that story at the time too because I remember when I found out I was pregnant, I wanted to tell everyone. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people who suffer loss in many different forms and I don't want to just be one of those people that talk about and celebrate the highlights of life and all the exciting, happy things going on because, yeah, man, life is... It's ups and downs. It's, it's, it can be really tough sometimes. So, I, yeah, it was actually very cathartic for me to share that publicly. Using your platform and your voice in such a personal way, um, I can see how that would connect with so many couples, women, people who have gone through similar experiences and make them not feel so isolated. Yeah, and I think it did. I got so many beautiful messages of people, you know, sharing their stories with me. Some of them said they'd, they'd never even hold another soul before. Wow. And, you know, it's funny because exactly sharing that story made me feel like, well, if I can make one other person not feel so alone um, or help them with their healing or, you know, just to be able to relate, then it's absolutely worth it. Okay, possible babies in your future <laughs> yes there'll be babies in our there'll future be babies in your hopefully future. not too many all at once okay yeah i'm scared i'll end up with a reality show and be the octo mom <laughs> with all the multiples in our dna but uh i would like just one at a time okay would be nice and the tour for two new albums yes there's the Godzilla yes. and there's human okay i like to say jess is godzilla and i'm <laughs> the human aspect but the truth is I'm probably more of the Godzilla <laughs> than Jesse. Um, but, yeah, no, two records. It's very exciting. It's been six years since we've released the whole body of music. Wow. And we've gone on tour as well as our own headlining tour. So, yeah, two albums coming out and then who knows what's in store. And um, how is this music different from music we've heard before? Again, it's the two sides of who we are. It's the, uh, 
It's the Veronica's in their full pop power mode. And that's Godzilla. With Godzilla, yeah. And then there's Human, which is uh, Jess and I more in our singer-songwriter mode, sort of opening up, telling our stories and being more vulnerable, so. Do you think, like, Godzilla is an element of giving the people what they want and Human is an element of giving you what you want as artists? Or are they both? I love that. I think so. Yeah? Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful way to... I was going to say close out this chapter of the Veronica's. But I don't mean that to sound final. I just think as artists, Jess and I have so much more to explore. What sorts of things are you interested in? Well, we're, we'll always make music together. Yeah. And in what capacity, I'm not sure. But we definitely, we're definitely ready to get back to our roots a little bit. So tell me about this beautiful part of the world. Well, uh, since meeting Logan, I've definitely been very interested in self-sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, we always dreamed of having a couple acres out in the mountains somewhere. Oh. Um, it's always been a dream of ours to be able to grow our own food and sort of create our own little ecosystem, essentially our own universe, and um, to be able to provide for ourselves. And we've had this beautiful idea that all the people that we love the most, we want them to plant a tree on the property. So maybe we can go plant a tree. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're um, trying to create a fruit forest. So laid out a bunch of stuff. I had a selection, but I think you, you wanted to do the miracle fruit. Let's go the miracle fruit. Okay, good like show. That. What does the fruit look like? It's a little tiny orange, little, uh, almost like a berry. So what do I do? Well. Dig a little hole? Yeah, dig a little hole. Um, oh. Not the first time I've gotten dirty knees. <laughs> oh, I feel so honoured having a, getting to plant a tree on your home, on your home, in your home. Oh, well, we feel honoured that you're doing it. That's right. Yeah, you're doing perfect. Oh, you're a natural. Which, so just give it a squeeze around. Yeah, you know, it's on Gardening Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oops, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Oh, that's beautiful. I want uh, harvest updates, growth oh, yeah. updates. You'll have to come out right when it yields. And it that sounds be. good. Well, Lisa, it's been so lovely talking to you and to you, Logan. Thank you so much for joining me on One Plus One. Thank you. Love you. Mwah. Oh, love you too, Polly. Mwah.